In the first half dozen or so lectures, we laid the groundwork for what does a PLC do, what is a PLC, and we even showed you how to build a little hardware trainer. And I call those getting in the mood lectures, getting in the mood to learn. And if your interest wasn't piqued during those first half dozen, then chances are you're not going to have an interest in this subject. The next thing we did was now we have to grab some tools so we can start to learn with the Micro 800. The first was software. You downloaded two pieces of software, you load it on your computer. The next thing to do is open the software, specifically CCW, Connected Components Workbench, create a project, and then open up or start the simulator, as you might say, and then power it up and then see if you can connect to it. This is a very important step. So we are actually going to do some things that we haven't covered yet, but if you follow along, you ought to be able to test your simulator and kind of put that to rest. In other words, you can pursue the remainder of the course knowing that you were able to connect to the simulator and it did work. Now, if you're using an actual controller, hardware controller, then you need to connect to that. So let's take a closer look at this simulator and let's go into CCW, open it up, create a project and do something with the simulator just to prove it works. We begin by opening up Connected Components Workbench, release 12. If you're watching this video months, years later, it might be 13, 14. We maximized our screen here. Now keep in mind this is a 1080p screen and the font size for Connected Components Workbench. In order to make it larger, I would have to go in and reconfigure this screen so we had larger text. We're going to create a new project. Ignore all this recent here. If you have a new load of CCW, you don't have any recent. So you're going to pick new, and I just keep the project default name that comes up because I'm not saving these. So create, and you're going to pick a controller, and it's going to have to be an 850 because there's only one simulator. This is simulating the processor, not really the I.O. modules, but it will also simulate the I.O. modules. That's what's so cool about this simulator. But there's only one processor or controller model, and that's this one right here that has the dash SIM. You have to pick that. You've got no choice. Select. And up here, of course, it gives you a choice of version, but this simulator is new with version 12, so there is nothing else to pick. Add to project. And there's your image of that controller. You can add I.O. modules. So you can actually add, if you click here, see you have five slots, one, two, three, four, five. And you can also add a couple modules off on the end, expansion modules. Now this is a brand new project. We don't have any programs. We don't have any modifications. It is just a bare bones simulator. One of the first things that we want to do is set up the connection path. So we go up to connection path, click on set up connection path, and it's going to bring up recent paths. I'm going to pick this one because this is what I have set up on my computer. So I double click on it to put it in the selected path, close. Now you see I have a path up here, and I could connect, except that there's really nothing in this controller. There's no program in it. It is just an instance of the simulator, and it's not even in RAM yet. Not until I go up here to this button right here, Start Micro 800 Simulator. It doesn't actually start it. What it does when I click on it, it creates an instance of the simulator in the random access memory of my, my computer. And from here, I can go match this address. And now I have a IP address associated with this simulator. Keep it in mind that this IP address is on the same subnet as my desktop computer. I decided to go change the screen resolution, or rather the display setup, for a 125% increase. This will make it easier for you to see the details on the screen. So what we have in front of us is we have created an instance of the Micro 800 simulator. And by the way, if you click on the main screen and it disappears, 
you can go down here and click to bring it back to the top. Or you can also knock down the size of the main screen so you can see both screens all the time. That's probably the best solution, but for right now, this is what we're going to do. So we have a simulator now that has an IP address, but it's not turned on. It's set aside in RAM, but it's not actually activated. So in a sense, what we're going to do is turn on this controller, and it came up with a fault. That's good. That way we, I can show you what you can do here. You can go up to, if this happens at this point in the process, this is the message. So I'm going to close this and then reopen it. I'm going to synchronize the module configuration, which is a almost a reset. Then I'm going to bring it back to the front. Remember, it's, it's behind this main screen. So you click to bring it back and turn it on. Okay, there it is. It's powered up, but it's not running because there's nothing in it. So now what we want to do is download something to it. There we, our program here has nothing. Just for grins, let's create a program, a new program file. It's ladder logic type. We open it up and we're going to put in rung, one rung of logic. Grab a true if on. This wants you to assign a variable. So we go to IO for the micro 850 and we pick digital input zero. Scroll down, digital input zero. Okay. Now we're going to grab a energized output. Go to the IO micro 850, scroll back up and pick digital output zero. Now we have a rung of logic and I'm going to save it. Now I'm going to download it. Now this is build and this is download, but a download includes a build. So if you watch down at the bottom of the screen, where it says rung number one in the blue banner, you'll see that it's building the project. Build succeeded, now it's going to download. When this comes up, this is getting way ahead of us, but download, download, load with project values. Project values are values in registers like timer, accumulates, and other values in math instructions. We don't have any yet, so a download is faster than a download with project values. Plus you have to consider in the future, if you have an offline database and an online database, you could download with project values and overwrite values of the controller that you really didn't want to change. So I'm going to download. You see downloading project file, build started. It's a lengthy process. Download once succeeded. Download is complete. Change the controller to remote run to execute project. I say yes. Now, I have the developer's edition, so I can run for one day, 24 hours. Yours is only going to run for 10 minutes. Okay, so OK is just to acknowledge. You see a rung of logic. If input 0 is on, then turn on output 0. You see the DI, digital input, DO, digital output. Now, let's go down here and pop the simulator back up here. You can see this is quite a bit larger uh, since I increased the font size on the screen by 125%. And we're in the run mode. Now, I can go to the program mode with my toggle switch here. Back to the run mode. And of course, I'm going to get that message every time I do that. So if yours quits running, you just go from, uh, you click on run and then go back to remote. You always want to leave it in remote. That means you have remote access to it. We have a rung of logic here. And if this bit is on, so I'm, gonna talk, I'm just going to click, one click right there. You can see the LEDs went on, the rung went true, and the output went on. That's all there is to it. You cannot click on things down here and turn on outputs. You can't do that. But you can turn on inputs. Well, input one comes on, but it's not connected to anything. We have no logic for it. But if we turn on input zero, it turns on output zero. And folks, that's all there is to running the simulator. Is you download your program, and then you can go in and click on any of these 28 inputs and control any of those 20 outputs and a whole bunch of other stuff. Very simple, right? Worked really good. Uh, you might run into some things with selecting the communi communications port for the simulator. I picked 100, 100, 100, I think 10. 
I was basically picking the fixed IP address of the hard wired port, Ethernet port on my laptop. But you can also do it with the soft back, software loopback too. There's a lot of ways you can do it. There are other lectures in this series that go into a little bit more detail on setting that up. But that's as simple as it is. We created a controller. We put in a rung of logic. If input zero is on, then turn on output zero. Download it, and we tested it, and it works. Golden.